See you after the uh, opening here. I don't know why the happy music starts playing here. This should have been a little more upsetting, I think. Oh well. No, not again. Who could be behind this one? Oh no. Well, at least you're not behind it this time, Dr. Wiley. I mean, I'm... Whew. Just telling you, those other 16 to 25 times, however many it's been, you know, that was on you. But this one, I believe you. Thanks to the Mega Man Legacy Collection 2, we are going to be doing our final Classic Series numbered game single segment run. I can't believe I got that out in time. This one's based on Mega Man 3 and 4, and if you know me, that means you know I'm going to love it. Let's get going. Now the cool thing about Mega Man 10 right off this bat is that you can pick between Mega Man and Proto Man. We're not even going to look at Proto Man though, because I still remember him in Mega Man 2.5D. Just you didn't do a good job, pal, that's all I'm saying. But what we are going to do is go right in and take on the very first Robot Master I faced when we got this game. And that would be Pump Man. I always liked his design, that's why I picked him first. He was my favorite of the eight. Nitro Man being a close second in terms of looks. This game's also kind of interesting because it's the only one that I bought and played in the entire franchise on day one. Like, there was always something that would keep me from getting games right off the bat. Or maybe sometimes I'd get them, but I wouldn't play them right away. I I'm sorry, Gunvolt 2. I, 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 yeah, it's, it's, I still haven't played that one yet. Why? Anyway, Mega Man plays by Mega Man 2 rules still. In other words, no slide, no Mega Buster charge shot. 
That can make some levels kind of dangerous. This one especially. Oh, that shrimp. The very first time I played this game, like, I, I still remember this. <laughs> you, this game came out on March 1st, 2010. But yeah, seven and a half years later, that dude hit me off this pipe right into the pit on the right. Still remember it. First death. I had three in this level when I first played it. I don't remember how the other stages went at all. I do know unlike Mega Man 9, though, I was not game-overing in just about every stage. In fact, I think I only suffered one game over because I, I died three times here. Got a one-up, though. And then just instantly... Uh... Took my last Mega Man into a pit just to refresh. Uh, dangerous gimmick here is with that sewage water. It will affect your jumps, and so are the. And uh, by the way, movement here will be affected if those Mets get their purple spheres on you. It will cause uh, Mega Man to slide around, but no big deal. And this jump's not a big deal either. Or at least I thought. Well, you know what? Just an excuse to go and take the lower path, which I think is the harder path than two, for uh, reasons you'll see a little bit later on here. Got some current going on in these rooms, so you have to be a little careful. You'll constantly be pushed around. Octo batteries. Hey, how's it doing? How's it doing? I think I meant how's it going or how are you doing? Ah, this is why you don't commentate videos late at night, me. Just saying. Sure seems like I was playing this game late at night, but nah, I had company. My brother was in the room. Pretty cool. I don't get to usually have someone around to talk to while I'm doing these things. Although I did back in the day, you know, Mega Man 1 through 8 were done with people watching. 9 was all solo, though. Oh, you gotta be careful of these bubbles here, though. Because look how close they are to the spikes. If you get caught, you're pretty much instantly a goner. And right here, they're trying to trap you. And it is a very tight fit. Especially with that current pushing you back to the left. I'm surprised I made it through that okay. Probably would have started this run completely over if I would have uh, died there. But no, this wound up being my very first take of the whole thing here. This is the Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 version of Mega Man 10, if you couldn't tell. I don't know if you've uh, seen it, but yeah, it's a pretty good game. Get Mega Man 7 to 10 all on one physical disc. I'm in. Oh man, I love this boss theme. Okay, with Pump Man, what he does is uh, he keeps alternating between low and high hops. He'll do up to three, and then he'll shoot his water shield out at you. You can shoot the bubbles away if you're really quick. You'll generally get two or three at most, but honestly, I don't really care about that. I just want to get close and shoot him while he's forming it so I can get a lot of hits in. In hard mode, he gets a really funny attack where he throws his little pump at you like a boomerang. Excuse me. Sorry, I told you I really like this music. Such the opposite of Mega Man 9. Got a little dangerously close to losing there, but no, I, I knew what I was doing. Gonna be doing a little risky, uh, style here with this one, because unlike the other single segment runs, I kind of wanted to see if I could buster only battle the bots, even though, just like with Mega Man 9, it's now been at least five years since I've played this game. Still, this is a good weapon to start with. Water Shield is awesome. If it wasn't for Jewel Satellite from the last game, this would be the best shield in the series. No doubt about it. Well, maybe Junk Shield could have something to say about it, but eh, whatever. We're just gonna keep going on in the same order I took these bots on. I think I'll eventually switch out of it in a bit. But yeah, Sheep Man's next. This all kinda reminds me of Kirby. I think other people said that too. Got a really interesting aesthetic going for it with the whole uh, cybernetic look. You don't expect this kind of thing in uh, classic series Mega Man. Mega Man X would keep using this over and over again. It was cool in X4, though. There we go. We got the life back we lost in that first stage. And the cool thing about these platform guys is you can stand on their heads, and they will lower while you do that. 
in a couple of levels, that's going to come into uh, play to help you out here. Those balloon heads are looking for a body, but there isn't one to find just yet. Later on, though, they will find stuff. Now, I want some bolts here. I just want to make sure I'll have enough for a uh, couple things. I think we're going to get the energy balancer uh, early on. Actually, I'm, then again, I'm not sure. I don't remember when I go to the shop in this run. This is well, a single segment run, yes, but I did take a break between the first aid stages and the Wily uh, ones just to uh, save the video clip, because this is recorded directly off the PS4. And you can only record a maximum of one hour at a time, so, you know, whatevs. This mini boss can be really easy or really hard. First, we're going to show you the really easy way. Just take one of these uh, Metroid light bulb things out. Let him come over to that side. And then you got a clear path to get on up there and shoot this thing down in one pass. Just wait until we have to fight him again. And it's not in this stage, but yeah. That's not going to go as well. These uh, totem pole enemies are not too bad either. You just got to be uh, smart about it. You have to take out the head to destroy them, but you can use the uh, buster to sh uh, whittle them down to size anyway. This one's kind of annoying because he's right at the point where if you go a little further to the left, he will respawn on you. So you have to be real careful because even just that little bit's enough to bring him back. So just the very edge there, and then you can get going. You can see how much uh, time you have with the meters underneath the platforms. At least I think you can. You should be able to, because this is going to be the first Mega Man game I think I've ever uh, uploaded a video of in HD. Up the ladder here are a bunch of spikes that you want to get rid of, because there's a small disappearing block segment. Not too hard, though. There's no tricks in this one. The next set coming up is kind of annoying, though. Kind of annoying in the sense that if you don't pay attention, I mean. Like, we got to see what, how it goes first. Cause I'm like, should I go? And I'm like, no. No, let's, let's hop down. Okay, I think I've got the idea now. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. That was a little closer than I would have liked. Oh, yeah, Mega Man 10. Thank you for bringing back the ability to be able to switch weapons with the L and R buttons. Mega Man 9 did not have that feature. Man, that annoys me so much. Getting close to the end of this one. Now, what you want to do here is hit the yellow block and then the red block, and then the green block on the side, but unfortunately I stepped on the blue one on the outer edge. No weapon tank for me, so forget it. Ow. And these games sure love their shield attackers. Been a staple of the series since 4. I don't mind them. Boy, the little mouse cursor. Now we're going to fight a boss that, for some reason, always gives me a little bit of trouble. Not in the sense that he usually defeats me, but... There's one attack that I'm not good at dodging of his. That. No, I am never ready for that static bolt. Ugh. And he shoots it two different ways, too. I'm not a big fan of the one that comes at you flying fast. You want to get closer to him when he does that, but eh, whatever. It's going okay. Now, with the clouds here, the last one that moves is always Sheep Man. And he always shoots uh, those ground static bolts at you. There we go. At least we finally dodged that there. Oh, look out. Mm. If you're going to do that, you might as well get right up in his face. It's just so much easier to dodge that way. This is going to be a close call. Who is going to win? Well, guess what? I wasn't looking which cloud moved last. I thought it was the one right above me.
Well, 0 for 2 so far. Bummer. I do think this run's going to be the one that has the uh, most uh, failures of any Mega Man game I've done. I don't remember how many happened in 5. That was a bad, bad single segment run. I still remember that being a train wreck. Let's see, while we have the time here, let me tell you in hard mode... The first cloud also does the static bolts on the ground. And when Sheepman ever hops back like that, he also sends the bolts along the ground. Oh boy. I can't believe I dodged that. Nope, don't look, uh, give sheep in the mouth. Whatever that means. Yeah, at this point, we're just pretty much damage racing him. I mean, I've already lost to him before. Ah, well. Hoping we can finish him on this pass, but it depends on if he stays down below. Nah, of course not. Man, two, three minutes on one boss. This run is kind of owie so far. And the real kicker is we're going to get one of the worst weapons in the game from this. I'm not sure I'd call it the worst, though. There's one that I really don't like using even less than Thunderwool. I mean, it's situational, but it has its moments on one boss in particular. It's Pump Man's weakness, and that's not the boss I'm talking about. Man, we are just going all out of order here. Do I want to take on Blade Man? Do I want to take on Chill Man, I'm thinking? I'm like, wait a minute, no, Chill Spike's pretty good, so let's go there. This one also has a kind of odd Mega Man song going for it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I hope we don't go 0 for 3. I already know how this one goes. Do you? Of course not. Pretty big fan of uh, some levels of this game. This one's kind of odd. I think the music kind of just... It's not bad, but it's just so awkward to me. These ice cubes break either when you shoot them twice or jump on them. Whatever happens first. Make sure to follow the right here so you can take the top path. It's definitely easier. Plus you're going to get a reward if you stay up here. To be fair, there I had already done some of the challenges in this game, because this game comes with a uh, challenge mode for Mega Man 7 through 10. 10 had quite a few of them, if I'm not mistaken. Like, 38? It was a ridiculously high number. Because they expect you to do them uh, with uh, all three characters. That being Mega Man, Proto Man, and the secret third character who no one knows. Oops. Stage is also pretty short, by the way. We're coming up on the final screen already. Compare that to uh, Pump Man, where it just kept going and going, it felt like. Hmm. I always struggle at uh, dodging those snowmen at times. I also keep forgetting that these birds do not uh, come in at random spots. They fly in at specific points. So if you don't keep moving forward, you're going to have them spawn in on you again and again and again. I think this one's the one where I keep getting him because I'm just like, no, I just want to keep taking out that bird, but no, just look back, shoot the egg bomb. Pretty easy. Be very careful at the end here because there is a uh, big eye wannabe that wants to jump right on you. 
that we're gonna let this fool take himself out. See you, buddy. Now, this boss, oh uh, man. This is one of the three bosses that I am not good at fighting. I almost always get caught by his chill spike. Because I'm never fast enough to get away. Yet at the same time, I'm okay at avoiding him in certain ways. Because you can shake out of it, so if he doesn't ram into you after he freezes you, you're pretty much going to be fine. And this is a boss that you can damage race, so might as well. I mean, we won, but... come on. And every time the Chill Spike hits you, I do believe it takes off one bar of health, so it's not like it's a no-damage run there, either. Eh. Hard mode, he gets the ability to shoot a low Chill Spike, high Chill Spike, low Chill Spike combo. And he can also throw five Snowball Chill Spike things at you from the center of the room. It's kind of hard to explain. It's not a fun attack to get around. Let's just put it like that. I mean, yeah. No doubt about where we're going next here, because uh, Chill Spike is this guy's weakness. Ooh, this is another good song. If I'm faster with the Buster, I'd be taking out the... Uh, enemy first and then the cannon before it starts flying off on us. I'm just... yeah. My reaction time is not good. Yeah. That's right, Mega. You do those angry hops, buddy. Chill Spike's awesome because it freezes enemies. Well, here I'm kind of stuck, and I thought I could take these out, but no, you can't do that. What you really want to do is just jump on them like that. And that's how you can get stuff like these screws here. Fighting these shield guys is a lot like fighting Gutsman G for Mega Man 7. You want to shoot him as he's charging at you, but you also got to hit him right in the head. Ow. Pay attention, me. You're going to lose another Mega here. You've already lost two. I'd like to keep it that way for a little bit if possible. One thing that's throwing me off right now is the, uh, I forgot to reset uh, a couple buttons, because I like having L1 and R1 switched in this game. Because R1, the first time you touch it, you go to Rush Coil. I'd rather it go and be the last weapon in my slot, so I'd rather it be L1. I see a lot of uh, enemies I'm not going to talk about up above. like uh, just how different these levels are from a lot of the uh, style you usually see in Mega Man. Like, Mega Man 9 had a lot of uh, more basic looking levels. Mega Man 10 does a lot more with them. I'm not calling Mega Man 9 a bad game because of that, because Mega Man 9's not a bad game. It's a very good game in its own right. Gotta get that health. We took too much damage in the stage, me. Yeah, wish you had a slide, man. Nope, that's just your brother's job. But he takes double damage, so forget about it. Final screen again. Come on, now let's see if I remember how to fight these things right. Nope, still a little slow on the draw. There you go. Either take the cannon out first, or take the... Uh, main part of it. Oh. Y you were totally not hitting me, Joe. And hey, we're going into this fight with full health. That should be pretty good. This is a fun one to me. This game has uh, in-game goals to go for. Just making it to the boss is what gives you uh, the those achievements, or whatever they're called. a little bit slow moving around here. That wheel cutter is kind of tough to get around sometimes. 
In hard mode, he goes way faster with his turns, but you can get a lot more hits in on him, too, because of that. Kind of funny how that works. Yeah, this is another one where I'm not doing the best, but at the same time, it's good enough. Halfway home. Starting to get into a little bit better of a groove, at least. I can deal with that. Now, Wheel Cutter, it's not the best attacking weapon, but it has its own use because of a, a certain utility that you can do with it. You're going to see this in a little bit. Oh, and now that we got Rush Jet, we can take on a one certain level, too, that I do not like going in without this thing. It's nice to see that Dr. Wily's turned a new leaf after 14 platformers, a couple fighting games. Oh, and the soccer game. Can't forget the soccer game. But yeah, Dr. Wily's finally a good guy after 23 years here. Totally not going to say anything about that dude in the middle that didn't do much for me in Mega Man 2.5D. I'm kind of surprised I went to this one first. For some reason, I thought I was picking Commando Man. Even though I've already played the whole run and know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, let's show what Wheel Cutter does right off the bat. Although you might want to grab the ladder there. This song is a pretty heavy favorite of a lot of people. I like it, it's not my favorite, but I ain't gonna uh, get upset if this one's your favorite. Then again, I'm not gonna get upset if any one of the songs that I'm not too big on are your favorites. Now, a lot of other things to worry about than that. Oh, like those, uh, Small little flame dudes. Ah, we're coming up on a mini boss that I thought this uh, water shield was good for, but no, it's actually not that good. You think the uh, water weapon would be good on these fire guys? It, it, I mean, it does okay, but there's one weapon that's way better for this one. I kind of want to run under the one that's above. That way the flames aren't going to hit you as easily. And then when he comes down, you just blast him. Because, I mean, if you get further away, then you start messing up. And that one has a lot more health than I thought. Burn Rooster. Oh no, I just remembered something that happened in this level. Oh, no, 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 you're all gonna say, oh. <laughs> There's something I'm gonna apologize for. You'll know what it is when you see it. It's not even this. This is bad, but this isn't nearly as bad as what you're going to see a little bit later. Oh, man, just thinking about that, that's embarrassing. Gotta find the safe spots here, which is right between these uh, flame shooters. What am I doing? There we go. There's Water Shield's special ability. That is a pretty good one, too. Oh, I'm starting to get nervous on jumps. That's never a good sign. When you see me getting nervous on easy jumps in Mega Man games, that means I have zero confidence that I can make them. And generally, I'll come up short and land in somewhere where I don't. There, though, we got lucky. Okay, yeah. Ah. <sighs> 
Well, first we're gonna go grab something. This is why I probably should have went to the other stage I was thinking of, Commando Man, first. Because if I did, I wouldn't have to deal with the stuff on the right. And I have forgotten completely how to deal with this part, and I am so sorry. I am so, so sorry for the next minute and a half. There you go, we got some skill now, and now we got this, right? We got it? <sighs> Nailed it. See, that wasn't that bad. As I'd find out afterwards when I did my Proto Man and Super Secret Third character that you probably already know who it is, I uh, was able to do that part just fine. J just saying. Just kind of want to hide in the little safe spots there, and I most certainly did not. If I was smart... Well, no, it's not a matter of being smart, because I didn't remember the level completely. The boss door is right behind that guy. I could have just used Rush Jet there, but it's like, yeah, whatever. Ah, man. And now we're coming against the boss that I totally, totally suck at. Solar Man. Yeah, there's one other guy that I haven't fought yet that also gives me trouble. You do not want to shoot him when he's doing that. And another thing I love doing is not only feeding the fire, but making sure I just stand right in the way. Buster only this guy, um... Not gonna be fun times for me if I ever do a real Mega Man 10 run. Okay, that went so bad. Let's just take him out with his weakness. Yeah. I just love running right into him when he does that silly little head bob thing. Oh, for crying out loud. Thank you. That uh, one could have gone a little better? Solar Blaze. It hits an enemy, it splits apart immediately. Otherwise, it'll do what you're seeing there. I mean, it's okay. Again, though, eh. It's not the best weapon in the world. Mega Man 10, I'll say this about it when compared to Mega Man 9. The weapons are nowhere near as good. I mean, I, that's kind of a high bar, though. Mega Man 9 has the best weapons in the series. And then probably 8. Mega Man 10, eh, some of them are a little too situational. Solar Blaze, though, is better than just being situational. It, it can come and do a couple things. Like, Wheel Cutter is not going to do too much. There's the advantage of Thunder Wool, though, but you have to be able to aim it. You can't just set it off naturally. Man, it doesn't even get that much uh, health, either. Health. Weapon energy. Once again, another split path, and this one's a little tough. You kind of want to start going. Hope you're paying attention to the layout of the land. I most certainly was here. The longer you take, the more those enemies that pop out of pits will bother you, and these ones, unfortunately, also explode when you uh, destroy them. So, yeah. Not fun times. By the way, this first little uh, bomb thing here after the midpoint, that has three bolts in it. I remembered that in the second and third runs of this game. One thing I didn't remember in the second and third runs of this game was to make sure to stay not there, because that guy will always jump on you if you do. Yeah. That 
This is not the room you want Rush Jet for. I thought it was, but no. I can handle this. Gotta be real careful. Just because the spikes are out of sight, they will still instantly take you down if you run into them. Now I'm just like, I don't remember the timing on this. In case you can't tell, this is my uh, least favorite stage of the eight. Although it's not anywhere near as bad as I remembered it being back in 2010. I just don't like enemies to pop out of pits. It's just like, mm. Curse Mega Man 4 for doing those at uh, fixed intervals. I love Mega Man 4, it's my favorite, but that's the game that started it. I know there are the bombs in Mega Man 1, but 4, again, is the one that started the whole fixed interval thing. This is the screen you want Rush Jet on. It's just like, forget it, just call it out, ride him. And hopefully you got enough energy left just to hop over that dude. And now you can take on yet another boss I'm just not good at. The thing that throws me off about him are his high hops, because when he comes to crash landing in from one of those, he will rock the foundation, and you will be stunned if you're on the ground when he is. And that sets you up for those kind of shots. When he does a low hop, you can get under him easily. You also have to watch out because you don't want to be standing right next to him because then he'll just shoot one straight forward at you. Like that. Man, that's four. This is not going so hot. Like I said, I don't remember if this one has more deaths than five because I can't remember how five went. But it's going to be close. Well, that didn't work, so let's just... Get in his face and uh, cut him down to size. It can also cut his commando bombs in it right up, so this fight is really easy if you use the weakness. Yeah. I don't think I've ever beaten this guy without using an energy tank. Or his weapon weakness. It's one of those ones that's not... Too, well, actually, no, I take that back. The third time I went through this game, I beat him with uh, just the buster. Full health going in. Almost lost, anyway. It is just tough getting around that commando bomb. He is so good at trapping me with it. Oh, uh, you can move this weapon with the D-pad. It's also my least favorite weapon to use in the game because you're constantly on the move. You don't ever really want to stop. And when you've got the chance to use a weapon on the run... You really want to use just Water Shield. Or the weapon this guy's going to give us. So you don't want to hit Commando uh, Bomb on the enemies directly. It, it does nothing. It has to explode. Water Shield is so good, though. Definitely my favorite weapon to use in this game, because I like playing more defensively in this one. I honestly bet Solar Blaze would do a decent job. Chill Spike's another one that's great, because of course it's going to take out the ground enemies. And it just freezes just about everything, so you can switch right back to the Mega Buster and take most guys down, including those big eye wannabe guys. Don't shoot these things, because they will uh, start shooting back at you. Also, whenever you're in the line of fire of those guys, they will shoot right at you. It can be a little tough for people, and I can understand why. You have to keep moving on these seesaw platforms as you go, or otherwise they will start making a noise and they will retract. And if they go all the way back on you, you're going to hate yourself, because you'll have to do the whole section again. I mean, you could use Rush. But, eh. Now, when I said uh, Water Shield was good for a couple of mini-bosses, this is one of them. You can jump up high enough to hit both of these things without having to use the platforms. Yeah, that went pretty well. So Spike's a good weapon to use here too, but you might want to... There you go. Good job. The cool thing about Chill Spike is it does more damage if the enemies land on the spike parts of it, as you'd expect. If you just freeze them, it does a little bit of damage, but, you know, again, 
you're not here just to uh, stop them. You want to take them out. And the best way to do it is just to set the chill spike down. Enemies that are weak to it get damaged by, again, the spikes more. I think I've said it four different ways now. At least you can uh, shoot the shots out from those face cannons. I don't know the names of the enemies in this one as well. Oh, that's just mean. In a more confident run, I'd be jumping on that platform over and over right now, not even worrying about it. But we're not Mr. Confident right now. For some reason, we're going to go for these weapon tanks. Actually, it's probably just to avoid the spiky areas. I honestly thought I was going to miss that jump just by a little. And you can see Commando Bomb's main use. It's basically, hey, do you want these items? Use it. Ah. Here I'm like, do I really want to do this with the platform again? Because this is the last one of the level. The answer's no. But make sure you fire or otherwise you're going to get picked off. Oh no. I did not really want to go down here. And somehow I saved that. <laughs> wow. A funny th uh, story, when I was going through this game uh, on another run, when I got to the boss door here and I went through, the music stopped playing. They took away the cool Mega Man 10 boss music. That really hurt. Here's another boss I don't remember how to fight very well. You want to be running towards him. Like right here, don't run away. No, 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 no. We are going to get... Uh, destroyed by him. Spoiler. If I remember correctly, when he's on top, you want to run towards him, because at that point he'll just be on the wall above you, and then just run away. I just keep stopping in No Man's Land. You don't want to be in No Mega Man's Land, because that's going to just get you owned. Just like I'm getting owned, right? Wait for it. There. Five deaths in one segment. And I think there might still be one left. Let's try this the easy way. You could angle Commando Bomb up if you were feeling, uh, brave. I don't like doing that as much. See, look at this. Now I'm not even getting hit because I've got the confidence to know where to be. Ugh. That's always so embarrassing. In the funny way, at least. I mean, I'm not upset. The Solar Man part is about the closest you'll see me getting to be upset in this run. Triple Blade is, by far and away, the best way to damage enemies in this game. Every blade does damage, and if you're right up in their face, you will take them out in no time at all. This includes many bosses. Let's go on and take on our final Robot Master here. Then I'm probably going to take me a uh, vocal recording break. Been using this mic a lot lately. Oh man, considering where I'm from, sports, especially baseball, yeah. I love it. Granted, I'm more of a hockey guy, but you know, baseball's in the blood. This stage is so much fun. This is another mini-boss where Water Shield is very good. Although you might want to put it on before you go in, before you get owned by soccer. Soccer is an okay sport. They don't take a lot of shots, though, and that... Eh, that's why I probably don't like it as much. Ow. Fine. Soccer is okay. Sheesh. Yeah, you can tell this is another one of my favorite songs in the game. That chill spike, I, I keep forgetting just how overpowered it can be at times. Every time you shoot these soccer balls, they uh, shoot up like a rocket. I mean, obviously. Haven't you done that in real life? You should. Now these ones will hurt you, they won't uh, outright uh, take you down, 
And you can jump on the uh, sides of them up top if you want, but it's better just to shoot at them and run under them as you go. But you gotta keep a steady rhythm, because they drop pretty quickly. Might as well get that one up, since I keep losing them in this. Let's call in Rush, though, just to make this a little easier. Well, I keep forgetting to switch to Water Shield before I go in here. Oh well. Ah. Soccer keeps taking me down, I'm telling you, man. Just watching this run reminds me just how frustrating maybe uh, a no damage run, you know, the old stuff that I used to do. It's been a while since we've done a, a series like that. It, it's been on my mind, I'm not gonna lie. I first think I'm gonna do the NES games. I mean, I see Raokao doing them now, and I kinda wanna get involved in doing Mega Man 1 like that. At least no damage run the stage. The bosses... If I uh, mess up, then whatever. In other words, making it just like the Mega Man and base playthrough as Mega Man. Been on my mind lately, but nah, not ready to do that just yet. What I am ready to do is take on baseball. This guy's not too bad, although I don't like how little health I've got going in, because I'm not as used to dodging his attacks. He'll throw a baseball at you one or two ways, and then it'll bounce around the room a little bit. You want to be getting under Strike Man on his third hop. So he'll do, uh, one, two, three. Well, actually, I'll just do two. You want to get under him as he's coming that last time at you. That's how to make this fight easier and give yourself a lot more room to work with. That was a risky move, and that's going to cost me. Because whenever I have a close call like that, I usually lose my focus. You know what the most embarrassing thing is? When you get close to beating a boss, and then you do that. Six. <sighs> well, at least we didn't have anything as bad as Hornet Man stage, where I uh, lost three times in the same part. Yeah, I know, Mega. We're, we're just... Losing to all kinds of guys here. This is one case, though, where, where, I, where I don't believe I switched to Triple Blood. No, we're going to take this guy on for real. That's like, come on. Hard Mode, he has this ridiculous attack where he'll throw five of those at you. Uh, depending on the order he throws them in, there are multiple ways to get around that attack. Funnily enough, afterwards, he gets dizzy, so... Well... <laughs> Kind of put myself in a bad spot there. You gotta be careful with that rebound striker. It loves coming back at you that last time. But yeah, two hit run there. I can live with that. Got through all eight. You know, it wasn't the greatest run, but, yeah. It'll get better in the, uh, Wily stage. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> the Wily stages, I, I don't know what I'm talking about there. Sorry. You know, you talk for 45 minutes and you get a little tired. You also get a weapon that does more damage for every wall it bounces off of. Up to three. So it does three bars of damage normally. It can do up to six if you bounce it off the floor, wall, ceiling, whatever. We are going to save here and take a break, because like I said, PS4 can only uh, let you record for an hour before it uh, decides it wants to stop. So I stop there.